All right, folks, welcome back to another video and the final video of the Florida series, unfortunately, I know. But hey, we've had a great trip so far, me and Badge, and all the guests that have joined us, all the people that have helped behind the scenes. But we're going out with a bang because today we are fishing Big O, AKA, well, Lake Okeechobee, AKA Big O. And it's one of the most notorious, infamous, famous big bass lakes in the world. Now, it's gone through fluctuations the last few years, last 10 years, basically, but right now, it's on its way back up, meaning it's becoming one of those elite spots again, where it takes tournament anglers like, you know, 25, 30, 35 pounds to win these tournaments out here. So, the bags are getting bigger, the bass are getting bigger, there's been a lot of 10-pounders caught recently. I mean, things are going off in this part of Florida, so we're going to do a full send today, spend the next six hours plus on this lake, just tearing it apart. See if me and Badge can put together a pretty decent bag on our last day in Florida. Before we launch the boat, remember guys, we are on the road to 1 million subscribers this year in 2021. So make sure you're hitting that red subscribe button below the video. Do it. It's free. You can always unsubscribe later, but let's get to that goal. I also want to send a big shout out to Joey Berg, who is a guide down here on Lake Okeechobee, who kind of, he, I spoke to him beforehand. He kind of gave me some ideas of places where I could fish. Because if you guys don't know, Lake Okeechobee is a giant lake and you're gonna be blown away badge you've never been on this lake before have you no i've never been this far south well when you get on it and you can't see the bank anywhere oh god you're gonna be freaked out it's like you're in the ocean it's like you're in the gulf of mexico <laughs> that's what it seems like and besides the great lakes up north i believe this is like the biggest like lake in america i'm, I'm somebody's gonna correct me but Besides the Great Lakes up in Michigan and stuff, I'm pretty sure Lake Okeechobee is right there with just one of the biggest lakes in America. So it's a huge lake. Thanks to Joey for giving us some ideas on where to fish. Going to be a lot of top water. Going to be some punching of grass. Going to be some lunker logs, some stick bait throwing. So your basic Florida techniques, maybe a swim jig, maybe a click bait. But one thing's for sure, we need a big bag. And we need it today. you're ready badge because we're in it you always know when you pull up to the quote-unquote right spot because when you do there's just boats everywhere <laughs> so this is gonna be spot number one and the techniques of today are gonna be varied you know we're gonna be throwing like I said some top water some just normal Florida stuff but uh, we need to get the trolling motor in the water because we still have a little bit of you know morning time low light type stuff going on so we really need to hit this top water bite while we still can. This is such a wild place to fish, guys. If you've never fished here, highly recommend it. Really excited to get Badge on his first Lake Okeechobee bass. Lord willing, that is. Just miles and miles of this under the, the surface grass. And in that grass, you know there are bass big and small ones and everything in between but it can be kind of a difficult place to fish obviously if you don't really have the, the know-how which I don't but luckily my buddy Joey does have the know-how and he gave it to me The old saucy swimmer has in store for us. Just kind of burning around a little bit. Get him. Oh 
my god. Jesus. Get him in the boat, buddy. Nice. Gotta keep it down out here. We can't get too uh, excited. Dude, same freaking technique from the other day. Yep. That's so crazy and cool at the same time. Heck yeah, brother. On the board. Gear safe's gone, buddy. It's always a good sign when you can get that goose egg out like right off the bat, you know? And just monkey off your back. Skunk out of the boat. No pressure. I know you're you're happy you got that fish in. Alright. I got one. For a fact? Yep. You got me wrapped around this thing now. It's probably going now. Yep. You see anything? No. No. I don't feel anything. You can't be there anymore. That was another bite on a rocker log. Good deal. Oh, there's a freaking fish right there. Well, we'll push over. I'm gonna get in that little pocket right there and punch this grass. Oh, he got one. Okay, right on. Oh, shit. Oh, it's so big. This is such a crazy place in the world. Like, we're surrounded by boats, everybody's fishing and people are just yoinking fish left and right. Like the guy literally just caught one. And then I feel a little lunker log bite. Look how yellow and black that fish is too. Yeah, it's so dark, man, it's they, crazy. They look so different here. Slight upgrade in size from yours, but I feel like we're just chipping away to that, that stud that we need to make today an amazing send off day. Let's see you, buddy. The lunker log does it again, and me and Badge, have been here for five minutes and we feel pretty confident about the pattern we're establishing. He's got a little saucy swimmer that he's kind of ripping and killing, so just kind of burning it for a couple cranks and then letting it sink. And then I'm kind of doing, it's a typical lunker log presentation, except I'm aiming at every little pile of individual reeds. Yeah, there's some fry right here. I think I pushed off a big bass earlier. But I'm just trying to target each little pile of course there's a billion piles so it's not like an easy thing to do it can be a little tedious but as you guys can see it can also pay off not sure <laughs> just ducked didn't say anything <laughs> We're going that way. We're the same distance as they are. He made one cast. He made one cast at the back side. I think it's okay. We're moving that way. Damn it, Andrew. Sorry. Sorry, Mike. That was, that was. What's that? All right. <laughs> I was born and raised in Florida. What are you talking about? That was kind of a dickhead cast you made, though. Look, man, I messed up. It kind of, you know, was kind of a dickhead cast you made. Well, third pot. Well, because I just didn't appreciate it talking to my boy. Well, I don't. But you shouldn't have made that cast. I thought you. That's why I was just in my bag. Well, I didn't realize you'd made the cast until I looked over and I was like, oh, shit. Because, see, I had already taken the boat and was starting to drift the other way because I didn't want to get any closer. And my guy here just, just cast right out their boat. Like, hey, y'all got something going on over there? I'm used to Yankees. That's amazing. <laughs> That's good shit.
All right, so just a little brief recap of what just happened. A good friend Badge here, you know. He's yeah. a good guy, real good guy. Doesn't mean anybody any harm. I can say that with all honesty and sincerity. However, he kind of casted a little close to an area that these people were fishing. So if you guys are not aware, there's all these like unwritten rules in bass fishing, like public lakes and stuff, and there's other boats around. And like I personally didn't think that Badge did something like heinous, but the guy obviously took exception to how close Badge was casting at his pile of reeds. Because they belong to him, Badge. Right. You didn't right. know that, but those yeah. were his reeds. That's right. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Are they not eating? No? Well, we caught two small ones, but that's it. It should get better as the week goes on. Are you staying around? Well, that's the problem. Today's the last day. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we ran into a little subscriber action. We know we, you know we love running into you guys out in public, so always uh, holler at us if you want to talk. But he was kind of telling us a little bit about the lake and just you know where the fish might be or may not be right now. So let's get back to the. Uh, I hate to say like old man like a mean way, but that's it was a it was an older gentleman who did not like badge throwing that close to his reeds. But uh, yeah, there's un there's unwritten rules to fishing, but the problem is because they're not written rules, not everybody like knows the subtleties of them. So, you know, it's all good. It, it, the confrontation didn't go anywhere beyond a couple words, but I mean, what are your, what is your reaction? I mean, you were the one, you were dead in it. You were in the confrontation, uh -huh. even though I was the one who uh, didn't appreciate it. But what, what is your take on it? I cast it a little too close, but I also cast it behind the reeds he was fishing with. So yeah, I don't really know, man. And that's that's why the unwritten rules are so murky because we weren't necessarily too close to him boat wise because all these boats are on top of each other. It's like but he had a problem where you cast it. Yeah. And that's just kind of one of those things. It's just kind of funky. You guys probably saw it, so let us know what you think about that. But anyways, let's get back to fishing. Oh, damn! He got me. No, no, no! Oh my God! He's got it. I don't know. Dude, what to do. yank hard so maybe it'll come off. Oh my God! It, it came off. It came it came off. off. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Bro, you about just <laughs> murdered a seagull. I didn't mean to. I, I casted, and he, the wind, and him. Oh, yeah. Straight matrixed. Yeah, I thought he missed it. No, he was just flying with my line. I was like, calm down, buddy. You're not helping us. He's about to spool you and kill himself at the same time. <laughs> I was like, dude, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you were like, yank it. It works. I swear. Just set the hook. I sound like a professional bird snatcher. <laughs> set the hook right in the seat, buddy. It'll work. <laughs> it'll, it'll be fine. I don't want to catch him. That's the problem. It went it went from right right to left. See it? There's a gar or something. I don't even know oh, what yeah. that is. I guess that's what I saw. But it's just weird. You just see a, a damn tail flapping all of a sudden. You're just like, what the? Dude, I almost named that 30 pound car. Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh. Dang it. You just freaking got a gar to eat your damn lunker or your cracking craw. I positioned it. He definitely ate it though, didn't he? Yeah, that was pretty much impeccable. All right, well, uh, I've caught this one off camera. You gotta, you gotta admire the hell out of this boat. I mean, we got 18 cameras in here, not one of them was running, so that's good. We kind of made a spot move. I'm not sure if we even talked about that, but we moved, we ran a few miles, and now we're in a place, I think it looks better, but the problem is the sun is just like straight up, there's no clouds, so the bite's probably gonna be slow. Look how dark that fish is. It's black, except for a little bit of a white belly. Kind of a football, but at the same time, not what we're looking for. We made a good re-entry sound, though. I saw, I, I pitched over here at a reed, and I saw something kind of swirl, so I, I moved my stick bait kind of erratically, and next thing you know, he was choking on a lunker log. So, you got bad snagging gars over here. You got me catching fish off camera. Got old men yelling at us. What else could go wrong today? Uh, I got some bad news. 
I'm worried here. I am, I am worried about the old 150 Merc. This video was not supposed to end like this so abruptly, but we were making a run back to our, the first fishing spot where we were having some luck this morning. And all of a sudden we started hearing this like metallic noise in the motor. And then not only that, but it was like, it was shaking really bad. And it was like pulling to the left, like turning the wheel to the right. It was really hard to do, but turning the left, like if you just touch the wheel, it would turn left. So I was having a hard time controlling it. So as you guys know, we've got the broken prop already that I've got a replacement coming, but it just didn't get here in time for this trip. And I don't know, I think we may have done some serious damage to this motor. I hope not. I really hope not. But yeah, I, so I made the executive decision because we had like six miles to get back to the boat ramp when this happened. I thought to myself, okay, I mean, the longer we sit out here, the more of the chances of us trying to start the motor up and it not turning on. So, uh, yeah, I just figured let's get the hell out of here. Let's get to back to the boat ramp where we're, at least we can put it on the trailer and get the hell out of here. But uh, might not be good. Might not be a good prognosis. So look, let's look at what we accomplished today. We got yelled at by an old guy. We did catch some fish though. True. We did catch some fish. We both caught fish. We saw a bunch of fish and a bunch of weird fish too. Like pretty much like 10 different species just swimming around doing God knows what. We broke my motor, potentially, maybe not, but I, like I'm just looking at it right now, I don't think there's any grass on it. There's not. So, I don't know, this is not good. It's not good. But one thing we did do is get through this entire Florida trip without it breaking. Because this is the last video that you guys are gonna see from Florida, I believe. So hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this series enough to smash that thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribing to the channel because uh, this may have been a very more expensive trip than I originally thought that it was going to be. So yeah, um, one thing you can do to help support the channel is do those things like I said, thumbs up button, subscribing. You can also buy your Guggen Squad stuff at GuggenSquad.com and use promo code LOJO, that way you save yourself 10% on anything you buy. You can also check out Badger's channel, old AO Fishing, see what he's up to on this trip. And uh, yeah, this has been one hell of a ride, man. One hell of a ride. We made it though. Yeah, we did make it, barely. And we're probably both sick of each other. We miss our wives. Ready to go home, but we are doing that today. And uh, yeah, big shout out to everybody who helped this, this uh, series happen. Let us know in the comment section what trips you'd like to see us take next, and we will add those to our list. And uh, yeah, love you guys so much. Thank you for watching as always, but we are out of here. Thank you.